we're getting towards the end of our journey through the letter of 1 Peter and this section I've called We Are Suffering. If you haven't done so already, I do encourage you just, just to pause this video, take some time to read through this passage for yourself, try and familiarize yourself with what Peter is addressing in this section, look for repetition and interesting ideas and spend some time praying. Uh, we want to study God's word because we want to know God better so that we can serve him more faithfully and know how to live for him and for his glory. So take some time just to do that. And I'm going to, as always, just highlight some of what I've seen in this passage. Peter does start with uh, these words, dear friends. And when he does this, it's a uh, note that we're getting into a new section in the letter. And here we're entering the very final section and as always it's useful to look out for the imperatives when you are digging into a letter like this so those are the verbs that are commands and here we see one do not be surprised is an imperative and then rejoice is another imperative do not be ashamed is an imperative and then commit Commit yourself to your faithful creator. Um, so all of those are imperatives. That is, they are verbs, that are commands. They are action words that Peter is addressing in this section. Um, so the one thing, just we are focusing in on suffering. Uh, and so it's useful just to, to see this fiery ordeal and uh, suffering that Peter mentions throughout this section. And so just looking at that as a key theme, suffering, linked with these imperatives, straight away we can see something important about this passage. He says, don't be surprised about the suffering, so expect the suffering. Then he says, rejoice that you get to suffer. But this is suffering that is linked with the fact that we belong to Christ. So don't be surprised, expect it, rejoice in the suffering. Do not be ashamed um, is another imperative. And then commit yourself or entrust yourself to God even in the midst of the suffering. Another key theme that we see throughout this section is um, not only is this rejoice here an imperative in the section, but it's also a repeated idea. So rejoicing in the suffering, eventually being overjoyed when the glory is revealed, so the suffering comes to an end. Um, this praise here quickly mark it off it's also an imperative we should be praising God that we get to bear that name we're not ashamed to bear the name of Christ and here we see we participate in the sufferings of Christ uh, we are insulted because of the name of Christ we suffer as a Christian you bear that name. So in focus here is very specifically suffering because of the name of Jesus. Because the fact that we call ourselves Christians, it is suffering that comes directly from that. Another tool worth using when you're digging into a passage is just looking for transition words or transition phrases. So things like this, so that, or for so then so in this case he's saying rejoice in that suffering the suffering for Christ so that in the end you'll be overjoyed when his glory is revealed so knowing the suffering is going to end one day and then flowing from all of this Peter then says for it is time for judgment to begin now this whole idea of judgment here is linking in with what Peter says about uh, the testing of your faith yeah so this testing this judgment um, are, are linked and the link here is uh, with one example in the old testament where we can see what the final judgment is going to be all about is in malachi Malachi 3 verse 1 to 4, for example, where we see the dual effects of uh, the final judgment. 
Uh, so the judgment will have a purifying effect. Purifying and a punitive effect. So both suffer, uh, judgment in the, in the aspect of purifying and judgment in the aspect of punishing, punitive. And for us as the household of God, as God's people, we have been um, spared the punitive aspect of God's judgment. Because of our Lord Jesus, we will not face that. Um, Jesus has taken our sin upon himself and we get to go free. But in these days, as God's household, we experience the purifying effects of God's judgment. That's what is happening right now. God is making a judgment on people, his own people, showing who are really his and who aren't. And that's how this fiery ordeal works to test us. Peter had already spoken about this uh, back in chapter 1, uh, verse 7, for example, where we see the refining fire. Uh, our suffering refines those who belong to Jesus and those who don't. And in that sense, the judgment is beginning with God's household. And he says, if it's beginning with us, what will be the outcome for those who don't obey the gospel? Well, they're going to face the punitive effect of God's judgment. And if it's hard for the righteous to be saved in that the hardness is that we face the suffering as we are purified, what will become of the ungodly and sinner? They will ultimately be punished for all eternity. They will suffer for eternity. And so Peter is, is challenging us, Say, don't be surprised. Jesus suffered and we are following in his footsteps. Suffering is the norm for us as Christians. So don't be surprised at the fiery ordeal. It's testing you. Rejoice that it shows that you participate in the sufferings of Christ because you bear that name. Again here, you bear that name. Don't be ashamed because right now, as we bear that name, the judgment is taking place. It has begun showing who really are those who belong to God and those who don't. It's purifying the church. And then in the light of all of this, Peter says, so then... Because of everything he said, so then those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves. That's another imperative. This is a, a verb that is a command. Commit themselves to their faithful creator. And this word translated commit here in the NIV, uh, the ESV translated as um, entrust. Should entrust themselves to their faithful creator. So this is a trust in God in the midst of suffering as we do the good that God has called us to do. Peter has already said in chapter 2 that we should live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse us of doing wrong, they will end up glorifying God. And we are looking forward to that day when God's glory is revealed. Right now, that's the spirit of glory and of God rests on us empowering us to stand up under the suffering and as we continue to do good we are waiting for that day when God's glory is revealed as we continue to do good we are entrusting ourselves to God and praying that God will use the good that we do uh, to be a witness to the world around us so that they will be ready for that day when Jesus returns and the big take home from this whole passage what Peter would want us to to leave with is that we should be among those who commit ourselves to our faithful creator and continue to do good in the face of suffering we have a God who is faithful he has done everything necessary to save us he secured our eternity for us as we face the suffering we aren't surprised because we are participating in the sufferings of Christ. We're following in the footsteps of our Lord Jesus. So that one day we will be overjoyed. This is literally that we would jump for joy. We have a, such a glorious eternity to look forward to. And we will be jumping for joy on that day. But until that day, we are to joyfully face our suffering, knowing that we belong to God, our suffering itself shows that we bear that name. And then as we suffer, 
we entrust ourselves to God as we continue to do the good that he has prepared for us to do. Back in chapter 2, we were told how 2 verse 3 tells us how Jesus entrusted himself to his father as he faced suffering. The writer of this letter, Peter, in Acts 5, for example, we see Peter suffering because of the name of Jesus. And then we see him and the other apostles rejoicing that they, they, that they were seen worthy of being um, insulted and suffering because of the name of Jesus. So Peter suffered as he lived for God's glory. Jesus entrusted himself to God um, as he faced suffering in order to win our salvation. And then Peter is saying, don't be surprised, it's going to come to you too. But entrust yourself to God in it. Joyfully suffer for doing the good that he's called you to do and know that glory is coming. So God bless as you dig in further and as you teach this to others. And I'll be praying that God will use his word to equip his church to be ready to face suffering for the name of Jesus and that he will get all the glory through that. God bless.